All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 6, Simple Harmonic Motion. The section is 6.1H, Period and Mass Relationship for the Mass Spring System. So here's the scenario. You could read the scenario to yourself, and here's the data. Okay, the first part. The student did not take care to ensure that the object oscillates with the same aptitude each on each trial. Their teacher informs them that their oversight will not invalidate their experimental result. Explain why is it in this case, right? So here are the notes, and this is the formula for the period, okay? And you see there's two versions of it. The first one, this is for a, the one that you have here, this is for a mass on a string, okay, which is defined by this. Then you have this version. This is a um, spring, and ma um, there's a spring, and there's a mass on a spring. So spring and mass. All right. Notice that this depends on the mass and the spring constant for the spring and the mass. All right. And this one is the length and the uh, gravitational. Uh, pool. Here's some information that you should understand about it where I'm going to refer back to. Okay, so pause the video if you want to read this to yourself. This is important information. All right. Okay, here's the formula for all the forces that are interacting with this, and this is what I'm going to refer to. All right. Okay, so the first one, let's see what I got. So, the student does actually does not have does not have to worry about the change in the aptitude because for small angles the period will only depend on the length of the string and not the aptitude. All right, like I wrote right here, with the assumption of small angles, the frequency and the period of the pendulum are independent of the initial angle displacement. So if you look right here, it explains it. This angle. Mg sine theta can be treated as L sine theta when it's small enough. All right. So the next part is for you to graph uh, the t squared versus m and draw a line of best fit. All right. You're going to be using this data, and for that, I'm going to be using Excel. So all I did here was I just wrote the mass and the t squared on an Excel sheet. Select all, hit insert. Scatter plot should be plotted. Okay. All right. It looks something like this. Uh, that looks like a good graph. Yeah, that looks like a good graph. All right. Okay. Now I'm just going to bring this over to the other side. All right. Yeah. So all I have here is I just plotted what I had from the Excel sheet from here onto the graph and drawing the line of best fit. Please understand that when you draw the line of best fit, uh, sometimes it doesn't always go through the intercept, but in case it does, in, in this case it does. And when you draw the line of best fit, you want it so that you have the same amount of points above the line and below the line, okay? If those who are taking AP stats, uh, this is like making sure that your, your residual is as small as possible, okay? All right. So that's this part, and part C is asking us, um, an unknown object is hung on the spring and has a period of 1.47, using your line of best fit to calculate the mass of the object. So you want mass of the object. Remember, we grafted period squared. Here they gave us just the period, okay? So the student gave us the period, 1.47, but we grafted t squared, right, p squared, so I squared it. 1.7 squared is 2.16. All I did is I, and I went right here and I looked for where t is equal to roughly 2.16, and I said it was roughly right about here, All right, right here, and 
I saw that intersects almost approximately it's slightly over the 3k mark so I approximate it to just three kilograms so a student who has a period of 1.47 the mass would be three kilograms in this scenario that's oscillating the next part um, using your line of best fit, not nearly a single data point, you, you want to calculate the spring constant for the springs graph. So here you would have to grab some data points. Um, here I'm going to grab some. The first point that I'm going to uh, grab here, uh, the first point is x1 is going to be equal to 2 and y1 is going to be one point. 4 right 2 1.4 right there okay this is 2 comma 1.4 and uh, this is the first point so I could say this 0.1 and we can have let's say green 0.2 point 0.2 point I can say that is 4 comma 2.8 so 4 comma right here 4 comma 2.8 all right, just roughly estimate it. All right, and then here I can use my slope equation. Slope is equal to delta y over delta x, which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is what I have 2.8 minus 1.4 divided by 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2. This gets you 0 0.7. All right. And this is the slope of the line. Calculate the spring constant. Explain how you would determine this. All right. So did I write the, did I give some more notes? Yep, right here. So I, get, I got you this. All right. I want to bring this up here so you can see. You should have, you should remember these notes from before. So this is what the slope is, okay? All right, so the slope is 0 0.7, and this is going to be equal to 4 pi squared over k. Does that make sense? I'm just making that substitution, all right? Solve for k. So k is equal to 4 pi squared over 0 0.7. Plug that into your calculator. What do you get? You should get K is roughly 56. Now, some of you don't want to believe me. So let me just grab you decimals. Okay. So 4 pi squared divided by 0 0.7. There you go. That's the, that's, that is the uh, K. Right, that's the spring constant. Okay, that's a really stiff object. Right, k is equal to 56, roughly 56, approximately Newton meter. Good. And again, if you would like to know the idea, this is the notes for it. You should read it. If you would like, pause the video. If you would like to take notes or read it. All right. Here's the next part. Suppose um, Carlos and Dominic also make a T squared versus mass. However, the graph made here, best line of best fit, is slightly has a steeper slope. Okay. Um, how would this affect the experiment value of the spring constant in your part D? What happens when the slope uh, goes up? Okay. Okay. I said as the steeper slope goes up, which is the slope value here. Let's just write this out so you can see it. Slope is m equals to 4 pi squared over k. So as the value of the slope here increases, okay, the k is on bottom, which is in the denominator. And this means that this goes down. So as this goes up, this goes down, right? Because it's in the dominator. 
All right, next part. How would this affect the value of the mass with a period of 1.7 compared to yours in point C? All right, so how would that change? So I would say that a steeper slope means that the value of the period of 1.7 will require less mass. So let me show you what I mean by this, by less mass. So this is the new slope, right? A steeper slope. Let me use uh, blue for this one. Yeah. All right. Watch this. No, let's. Yeah. Right. It has a steeper slope. Do you see how it has a steeper slope? So, and again, it's still going to be the period of 1.7. So the t squared is 2.6. Notice right here. This is the new. Right, this is where it was t is equal to 1.47, t squared is equal to 2.16. Notice now it requires what? You see this? It has less mass required. Okay? So a steeper slope means what? Okay? The steeper slope will make it so that you require less mass. Okay? That is what it's occurring. You should tell, you could look that graphically, okay? All right, so there you go. Those are all your solutions uh, and notes for 6.8H.